I would now like to call upon Professor John J. Farmer, Jr., Director of the Eagleton Institute of Politics of Rutgers University and the Miller Center for Community Protection and Resilience within the Institute. John is an esteemed lawyer and dear friend of the International March of the Living, with whom we have worked on a number of important initiatives. The former Attorney General of New Jersey, John Farmer brings to us his experience, his expertise, and his commitment to seeking justice. Thank you, Richard, and good evening, everybody. On August 13, 1920, when Adolf Hitler made his first public anti-Semitic speech titled Why We Are Against the Jews, and the Nazi Party boasted a membership of exactly 60 people. Few, if anyone, even Hitler himself, could have foreseen the monstrous tale and consequences of his hate-filled words. Like Osama bin Laden's declaration of war against the United States delivered from a remote cave in Afghanistan, by a seemingly marginal eccentric. Hitler stated, quote, thorough solution, the removal of the Jews from the, from the midst of our people, was essentially dismissed at the time it was issued. In retrospect, both seemed chillingly prophetic. The slaughter that was the Holocaust ended with the murder over a four-year period of six million Jews, and by some estimates, almost as many others deemed undesirable. But this attempted genocide on an industrial scale began a quarter century earlier, with the ravings of an irrelevant madman and proceeded in graduated and gradually accelerating steps toward the final solution. On August 3, 1921, Hitler took those first steps by establishing a militia, the SA or Brown Shirts, the storm section of the party, whose purpose was to take the offensive at any given moment in attacking Jews and communists deemed the principal opponents of Nazism. The Nazis then turned to the recruitment of young people, forming the Hitler Youth Movement in July 1926 to impress upon the young the ideal of racial purity. The party turned from harassment to murder on New Year's Day 1930 when the Brown Shirt Militia killed eight Jews. And in the early 1930s, as the party tried to build its base of support, there was open violence in the streets as the Brown Shirt Militias battled their leftist communist counterparts, whom they frequently identified as Jews. But the pace of persecution accelerated with the accession of Hitler to the chancellorship in 1933. The brown shirts gained official status when Hitler appointed 50,000 of them as auxiliary police. A police raid on Communist Party headquarters turned up false planning documents targeting public buildings. Within a month, Hitler used the mysterious arson of the Reichstag fire as a pretext to arrest communist leadership, crush communist opposition, and consolidate his power. In the wake of the fire, at a meeting of the German Bar Association, 10,000 German lawyers took an oath of personal loyalty to Hitler, no longer to the Weimar Republic. This effectively ended the rule of law in Germany. Courts became tools for implementation of National Socialism. By April 1933, all Bar Association business was conducted under the supervision of the SA. The Nazis assaulted all the instrumentalities of liberal democracy. The press was assailed as an enemy of the people and eventually silenced. Books deemed degenerate by the Nazis were burned, 20,000 at one time in Berlin. Non-Aryan scientists like Albert Einstein were exiled. With the leftists and communists crushed, the opposition press silenced, leading intellectuals marginalized, and the lawyers and judges enlisted, the Nazis turned their attention fully to the legal destruction of the Jews. Among the measures adopted eliminating Jewish legal personhood in Germany were the following. A law for the restoration of the civil service in 1933, which banned Jews from representing Aryans and from participating in the civil service, including teaching. A people's court established to punish enemies of the people, most of whom turned out to be Jewish. There was a law passed to revoke German citizenship for Jews. Jews were also barred from all athletic and sporting associations, excluded from the Reich Chamber of Culture, banned from working on German newspapers or appearing on stage or screen. Jewish companies were barred from mention on radio. Jews were barred from taking a bar examination. Jewish newspapers were banned. Jews were barred from serving in the armed forces. The 1935 Nuremberg Laws, signed by Hitler himself, barred citizenship for Jews and any non-Aryans. People with Jewish names could no longer use them sending, even sending telegrams. A law prohibiting mixed marriages prohibited Jews from marrying Aryans. A secret directive 1937 commanded press protective custody for all defilers of the German race. Finally, 1938, the law was passed requiring the Jews to change their family names so that it sounded less Jewish and forbade Jews from practicing law or medicine. 
And then another 1938 ordinance barred Jews from participating at all in the, in the German economy and participating in all cultural functions. Jewish children were forbidden from attending schools. German students were taught that, quote, the Jew is our greatest enemy. All Jewish businesses were required to be sold in 1938. The German government eventually required Jews to wear a yellow star, revoked Jew Jewish passports, limited the use of public transportation, excluded them from participation in the press and radio, and ultimately required the Jews to be resettled in concentration camps. In short, before the systematic physical extermination of the Jews began, they had suffered an extermination of legal personhood and a withering torrent of anti-Semitic messaging, vandalism, beatings, isolated killings, boycotts, and propaganda. As one historian put it, the dagger of the assassin was concealed beneath the robe of the jurist until Kristallnacht. Kristallnacht was the event that brought the dagger fully out from under the robe. It was the event in which hatred migrated permanently across the brain-blood barrier of extremism and became open and state-sponsored violence. As David Frum has put it, quote, through the end of 1937, it remained possible to hope that the Nazi persecution might still respect some last limbs of humanity. Surely, in an advanced and cultured nation, some decency must still constrain uttermost barbarity. On Kristallnacht, the last of those illusions was smashed like broken glass, close quote. Retaliating for the murder of a German diplomat in Paris by a Polish Jew who was angered by his parents' deportation, Hitler ordered a, quote, night of terror, close quote, throughout Germany, Austria, and the recently acquired Sudetenland. The Nazis unleashed a storm of destruction and murder on November 9, 1938, that signaled a decisive turn toward state-sponsored violence. Synagogues, shops, homes were vandalized and burned in the thousands. Over 90 Jews were murdered, countless others beaten. The police stood by and watched where they didn't actively participate themselves. 20,000 Jews were seized and sent to concentration camps at Dachau, Buchenwald, and Sachsenhausen. Several hundred died at the hands of the guards in those early days. On January 30, 1939, Hitler gave another speech. Reacting to international outrage over Kristallnacht, he said that even if Germany found itself at war, quote, the result will not be the Bolshevization of the earth and thus a victory for Jewry, but the annihilation of the Jewish race in Europe. We see it now in retrospect. After Kristallnacht, the course was set. As Paul Miller mentioned in his welcoming remarks, that history alone would be worth commemorating tonight. That history also urges us to look closely at the world we confront today, at the way vulnerable populations are treated, at the persistence of hate and the many forms of its expression, and at the efforts of extremist groups to move from marginal players to mainstream actors. The protection of vulnerable populations is the purpose of the Miller Center at Rutgers. We have worked with communities as diverse as the Muslim community in Brussels and the Jewish community in Whitefish, Montana, the African-American community in Louisiana and Mississippi, and the Sikh community in Wisconsin. In seeking to assist these very different communities, we have been struck by a common thread and a common threat the increasing use of social media and the cyber world as a means of recruitment, incitement, and dissemination of hatred toward and violence against vulnerable populations. We were therefore privileged to have been asked to partner earlier this year with Dr. Joel Finkelstein, James Madison Fellow at Princeton, also now a senior research fellow at the Miller Center, and the Network Contagion Research Institute <coughs> he leads. Together, we have written groundbreaking reports exposing the emergence of the right-wing militia Boogaloo Boys and predicting its potential for violence, the rise in anti-Asian hatred in the wake of the pandemic, the emergence of extreme leftist anarcho-socialist violence, the insidious propagation of QAnon conspiracy theories, and most recently, a report on the new face of anti-Semitism emerging on social media. The extremist Joel will describe spreading hate over social media may be small in number and marginalized for the moment, but the example of Kristallnacht should arrest any temptation to dismiss them. For just as Kristallnacht and what followed resulted from intensely controlled and intensifying messaging of hateful propaganda, so the extremism of today is the product of a social media environment that reinforces every form of prejudice, that converts general proclivities to fixed convictions. And our work has shown that when the messaging of hate reaches a peak of intensity, murderous violence erupts, as in the attack on the mosque in New Zealand, or the synagogue in Pittsburgh, or the killing of law enforcement officers in California. The only answer to such hate is light, the light of truth, the truth that shames every form of hate. Joel's work shines that kind of light. Now he will share that kind of truth. <laughs>